Hello friends, welcome back to another episode by Engineering Today. And we're back with two interesting SpaceX updates for you. We'll start with SpaceX's change in plans for their upcoming debut of Orbital Flight Test, and we'll wrap up with SpaceX breaking their ties with Spaceflight Inc., who had been their partner for a long time. Let's get started with SpaceX shifting towards newer prototype of Starship and Super Heavy Booster to go for their first Orbital Flight Test. While the FAA is constantly delaying the license-giving process of Starship, rumors were found in space communities that SpaceX may possibly dump Ship 20 and Booster 4 from taking part in the first orbital flight test and may go for some newer, upgraded prototype. And presently it seems that SpaceX is making that rumor a reality. Recently, Elon Musk had written on Twitter that first Starship orbital flight will be with Raptor 2 engines as they are much more capable and reliable. 230-ton or about 500k pound thrust at sea level, will have 39 flight-worthy engines built by next month, then another month to integrate, so hopefully in May for an orbital flight test. And this tweet confirms that SpaceX will go for a newer prototype as neither Ship 20 nor Booster 4 has Raptor 2 version. To install Raptor 2 engines, the engine thrust structure of S20 and B4 needs to be changed to equip the larger engines. And building a new rocket is less strenuous than changing the thrust structure of a fully built rocket. Thus, they go for a new one. We know that in 2021, Musk had assigned Booster 4 and Ship 20 for Starship's orbital test flight. This planning was carried on throughout the rest of 2021 and also in early 2022. But the recent update from Musk hinted towards using a newer prototype for the flight test. Even Musk himself wrote new when he was asked whether Starship SN20 and Super Heavy Booster 4 still conduct the orbital flight or not. As per reports, Booster 7 and Ship 24 are the two prototypes of Ship and Booster that will use Raptor version 2 engines. And it's expected that SpaceX will go with Super Heavy B7 and Starship S24 for their orbital flight test. Report says that both S24 and B7 will comprise a good number of design changes, such as modified header tanks, an entirely flush nose cone of new design, upgraded pressurization, avionics, heat exchangers, and many more. The thrust structures of these new prototypes would have been tweaked to support new Raptor V2 engines in place of the Raptor V1 and V1.5 engines. From Musk's tweet, we get to know that the SpaceX team plans to complete building 39 Raptor 2 engines by early April, followed by completion of the rocket by early May. Musk also provided a probable time period for orbital flight test, which can take place anytime in May after completion of cryo and static fire testings. Till now, SpaceX had only performed a single three-engine static fire test earlier with a super heavy prototype, which is quite outdated in front of recent upgrades. That test was also of Raptor 1 or V1.5 engine. SpaceX teams are yet to test any Raptor 2 engine with the Starship prototype, so it's expected that the test campaign of Starship Prototype with Raptor 2 will be a lengthy one, gradually evolving from igniting a few engines to igniting all 29 or 33 engines. And reports say that this planning of Starship with Raptor 2 has made SpaceX appear to retire Booster 4 before doing any single static fire or flight test. Presently, Booster 7 is almost near completion to make way for a probable cryogenic proof test sooner or later. On the other hand, Ship 24 is still left to be assembled completely and may take nearly a month to get ready for tests. Sources state that if SpaceX manages to carry out the Booster 7 proof test campaign in late March or early April without waiting for its Raptor 2 engines or heat shield, then they could complete cryo-proofing within the planned time. In the meantime, few of the engines can be installed, though Ship 24 will have less time for tests according to the projected time for launch test. Ship 20 had completed most of the tests without issue, so SpaceX has good confidence on the S24 design. We'll wrap up with an update on SpaceX, putting an end to their ties with Spaceflight Inc. 
which has been a partner with them for quite a good time. Recently, reports have come that SpaceX is breaking their relation with Spaceflight Inc. after they've worked in a tie-up for many years. The Spaceflight executives were taken aback with surprise. Jody Sorensen, Spaceflight Marketing Vice President, said, We were surprised to learn of it on Friday, and were not given any insight into the reasoning behind the decision. We continue to reach out to SpaceX in an attempt to discuss their position but haven't heard back yet. SpaceX had sent an email to all the companies that send satellites to orbit on their rideshare missions. They stated in the email that they will no longer be flying or working with Spaceflight Industries after the currently manifested missions. We look forward to reliably launching all customers currently on our manifest and growing our relationships with new operators as well. Last year, SpaceX had removed a Spaceflight Sherpa tug from the SpaceX Falcon 9 Transporter 3 rideshare mission as the propulsion system of the tug had a leak. Further, another flight of Sherpa tug on SpaceX's rideshare mission was also canceled as the spacecraft installed on Sherpa was getting affected from environmental factors. Jody Sorensen said, Sherpa itself was subjected to all expected launch environments with industry standard factors. Spaceflight and SpaceX continued to discuss analysis and test products up until Spaceflight was informed that SpaceX would not fly the vehicle, which was the day of final integration to the SpaceX vehicle. It may be possible that the problem with Sherpa Tug led SpaceX to break ties with Spaceflight Inc. Putting light on this issue, an official of ExoLaunch, a payload integration company, stated that SpaceX is renowned for its reliability and overall performances as the leading global launch provider. We are proud that SpaceX delegates significant portions of the technical work to the launch integrators who must ensure that they match and meet SpaceX's technical requirements and high standards. If these requirements and high standards are not met, then the safety of the whole mission can be placed in jeopardy, which is an unacceptable risk. Spaceflight has since worked with the vendor to address the root cause and has subsequently received approval from SpaceX to fly the system on an upcoming Starlink mission. We know in the space industry, launch integration is a huge place of business, and companies like Spaceflight, ExoLaunch, and D-Orbit are often relied upon by both old and new launch providers to integrate CubeSats and microsatellites as secondary payloads or rideshare missions. According to ExoLaunch, these integration companies bring down the launch costs per satellite, supply essential mission hardware, take care of the end-to-end -end mission management, provide environmental testing, and perform the satellite-to-launch vehicle integration. SpaceX's partnership with Spaceflight Inc. has gone together for quite a long time, and it seems that this is the end of this tie-up. Yet, we've some pre-scheduled launches where Spaceflight will see them working still with SpaceX. For the upcoming launches, Spaceflight had already started working with SpaceX to deal with issues connected with the analysis and test results of Sherpa and its customer payloads. As per reports, Spaceflight has already planned backup flights for the affected satellites of their customers. Sorensen said, Several will continue to fly on this mission, while the others have been rebooked on alternative launches. Best efforts, SpaceX chose not to fly the Sherpa vehicle until the analysis and test approaches could be better understood. We continue to work with SpaceX to understand their decision and address any concerns for future missions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.